Okay, so now we're going to really see, with the help of the definition, really what vectors and one-forms do when they interact with each other. And we're going to see how this kind of can be really intuitively visualised using a nice representation of one-forms as kind of stack sheets of surfaces and vectors as arrows piercing those surfaces. So let's just begin with a simple definition. A vector, when it acts on now an arbitrary function, we can define this in the following way by forming the one form df and now I'm introducing an angled bracket notation essentially this is just a kind of way to represent a map but this df object is going to map now the vector so essentially just quickly this angled bracket we should think of it as being an object by itself, whatever is in this slot is kind of going to be whatever the name of the object is, let's just call it A, and now this whole thing is a map, it's going to take some input into the slot, let's just call it input B, and then it's going to map the input into whatever, say in our case, just a real number. So in this case, when I wrote the one form I represented the one form df as essentially just a map object. Sometimes you'll see people writing df and then just putting the vector in brackets like that. I don't really like that too much. But these angle brackets are nice and they keep everything concise. So this is just the definition. Let's now kind of work with it and see where it's going to take us. So let's just focus on the left hand side briefly. Remember I told you that vectors, well we can express them in components and then using a derivative, which is the coordinate basis, this whole thing now can just simply act on a function like that. And now if you watch you should watch my video on the tangent space to get a full understanding of what this means, but I'm just going to leave it for now. Essentially this vector acts on the function and just produces the tangent vector to that function. And now we're going to see how this kind of arises. Let's now have a look at the right hand side. So I'm going to begin just by writing this df in a slightly more familiar or suggestive form using the coordinate basis. So from just from the definition that I wrote in the last video, the exterior derivative, when it acts on an arbitrary function, we remember it was given by just the derivatives of that function with respect to the coordinate functions, and then this object dx nu, which was our one form basis. And then now we can just simply plug in again a similar expression to over here, just and we expanded the vector again in the coordinate basis. I should use a different index just to be completely consistent. So how do we proceed with this expression now? Well, let's just leave the left-hand side as is and work with this. So these df by dx mu's and these v mu's, essentially they're just real numbers, so they can be pulled out of this map and just be left at the front as scalar multiples. And now what we're left with here, this expression in the angled brackets, the kind of map of the basis one form with the coordinate basis, this is now just simply defined or it's just going to give us the Kronecker delta. So if I just rewrite these angled bracket maps in a more suggestive way. Let's let this vector d by d x nu act on our dx nu. And now this is just a bit of a confusing notation, but if you were to work all the way through with the definition of the exterior derivative, you would just simply find that this is just going to produce dx nu by dx nu, and of course this is just then giving us the Kronecker delta, 
this expression in green is just the Kronecker delta. And now this is a general definition that we're going to use quite heavily whenever we encounter these one form and vexer contractions in this way. Whenever we see the coordinate one form and the coordinate basis contracted together, it's just simply a Kronecker delta. So now this is just going to leave us. Okay, now we're just going to be left with. Okay, and now when we contract all of our indices with the Kronecker delta, essentially we just can set one of these indices equal to the other. And now we're just simply going to be left with like that. And now we should realize that these two expressions are essentially the same. Well, they are the same. So this definition is consistent. And essentially what it means now is that when we act on a curve, just an arbitrary function with a vector, what actually happens, or how this is computed, is that we take the exterior derivative of that function, which produces a one form, and then that one form eats the vector that we're acting on the function with. So now you might have seen expressions that now in vector calculus look something like this, where we're taking the gradient of a function. That is essentially what this definition, which I wrote here, is representing. This gradient operat operation is simply just a vector. Remember, the gradient operator, we can kind of, if you remember, you can just express this Nabla gradient operator as some kind of derivative operator like that. Now we see what's actually happening when this gradient operator acts on a function. We're simply using the exterior derivative to turn that function essentially into a set of vectors or a set of components which re essentially represent the rate of change of that function in each of the coordinate directions. And then when we use the, the Nabla operator in our, all of our expressions, essentially you can view the Nabla operator as just uh, a vector with components 1, 1 and so on. It's just the identity because we're just using the coordinate basis. And so when we take the gradient of a function, in practice it's actually being computed using a one form. And so everywhere I've written these, we can now just ignore them or just remember that this component is just one. And essentially what we've now computed is the gradient of f. And it's given by this kind of partial derivative expression, which now we see as being a list of derivatives in each of the coordinate directions of this function. So hopefully this is just a nice way that you can now kind of see the relation between vectors and one forms. Um, hopefully this has kind of made something from vector calculus that you're very familiar with using a bit more clear of what's actually happening. And so what we should really realise is that vector calculus actually has nothing to do with vectors, it's more to do with one forms, because it's really the exterior derivative and the way that we contract the vector with the one form that really does all the work for us. Okay, so I'll just quickly summarise what I introduced here. Essentially, I began by just stating a definition, how a vector acts on a function, we define this by essentially turning that function into the one form df. And we saw that this kind of angled bracket notation kind of represents an object df, which is waiting to have something inserted into this slot. And we insert the vector into that slot. And now essentially, we've seen how that this definition, while well, it was, first of all, we showed that it was consistent. And now I kind of gave you an interpretation of how you should view this kind of vector acting on the function using the kind of gradient derivative operator, which you might be familiar with from vector calculus. Essentially, when the vector acts on the function, 
it kind of has these partial derivatives as its basis vectors and it produces these kind of components which represent the rates of change of that function in each of the coordinate directions. And now we've seen how this gradient vector operator can be used to represent the action of this vector, but now it's actually kind of better to think about this gradient in terms of the one form df. Because the one form df, simply how it's defined using the exterior derivative, we just are given these components df by dx mu. These essentially are the components of this gradient operator acting on this function. And so we usually, or it's more traditional, to call this object df the gradient. And it's now a one form of vector.